today on We Love It Outdoors. This seems really, really fishy. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Pretty, pretty healthy fish, Nice, huh? clean. Nice musky, nice musky, hit it hard. They pull hard, you can't, you can't do much with them. They go where they want to go. Oh, it's barely hooked, barely hooked. I'm Dan Eigen, full-time guide and avid outdoorsman. These days, it's easy to get stuck inside in a virtual world. But the real world is outside. So I challenge you to put your instincts to work making real memories with real people. Because we love it outdoors. A postcard perfect dairy farm sitting deep in the North Woods definitely says Wisconsin. But in addition to its famous cheese, Wisconsin truly is a sportsman's paradise. From the majesty of Lake Michigan to the slow roll of the mighty Mississippi. And while Wisconsin may not have 10,000 lakes like its neighbor, what it does have are miles upon miles of small pristine rivers most of which are loaded with fish, including the elusive muskie. Morning, Kurt. Morning, Dan, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Uh, I'm all set for the day. I'm excited, totally pumped. Late July, river levels are great. Here we are, north central Wisconsin, Wisconsin River. Full moon, let's get after these big muskies. That's like guaranteed muskie, uh, isn't it? I would think so, <laughs> I would think so. Uh, Kurt Schultz is a small river muskie expert who specializes in the shallow water of the upper Wisconsin River. On this stretch between Merrill and Brokaw, Wisconsin, the water is mostly less than four feet deep, and 10 feet is considered a really deep hole. You know, a lot of times they're looking for these little flats, maybe where it's you know, real shallow and then drops at three, four foot. A lot of times those muskies will hang out right on them edges. And basically they're waiting for some, some bait to come flying by it or uh, just, just kind of laying out of the current a little bit. So muskies love to lay in those areas. Always great areas to cast, and you see these corners coming down the river, you want to kind of hit these inside edges. It just looks so, it looks different than what we've seen so far this morning. And so you're saying this is kind of the hot corner, huh? Yeah, there's always a few fish for sure that hang out right along this edge here on this corner. Right off the tip of that fallen birch or what? It, yeah, I think it's a birch. And don't be surprised, Dan, you know, you get those muskies way up shallow. They'll lay in that foot of water. Okay, so try to get up there without catching a tree. Yeah, for sure, sure for sure. Oh, you always gotta catch a few trees during the day. It's a shock to most anglers to imagine a river this small and shallow being a haven for muskies. It flies in the face of tradition that says big muskies live in big, deep natural lakes like Mille Lacs and Leech in Minnesota or Green Bay here in Wisconsin. But one flip through Kurt's collection of guide pictures and you can see there's no shortage of quality fish here in the little Wisconsin River. Yeah, when I'm coming down the river, basically I'm looking for, you know, you got these shallow little flats up here. It might be only a foot, foot deep or so. And uh, once you get down maybe 20, 30 yards, it's gonna drop down in that three, four foot range. A lot of times those muskies will crawl up and hang behind them brake lines, you know, get out of the current a little bit. And uh, good ambush spot, get your bait in there and there's an aggressive fish in there, he'll be after your bait. Wherever you see eddies coming down river, you know, you see the current breaks. Um, you know, don't be surprised too when it's real warm out, hot out. Sometimes I'll find a lot of them fish right out in the current or close nearby the current with a little bit more oxygen. Uh, but most of the time I'm probably going to hit most of the calmer water. Try to get those fish where they're in a, a calm, calm water spot, get my bait in there and work it real slowly through there. There's so many places to fish on a river, but you try to want to zero in on the more productive spots. Well, Dan, right down here, we got a great spot, big corner in the river, okay. deep. Uh, it's one of the deeper areas in the whole entire river, actually gets down to 12, 13 feet of water. And uh, we're in about four feet now, but it's gonna drop down in that deeper water. A lot of walleyes, a lot of bass. Both sides of the river, middle, they hang out everywhere. So we just gotta hit it pretty hard. Cool. There we go. Oh, that nice was a nice fish. one, Kurt, yep. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Nice. Attaboy. How do you feel, Dan? Good one? Yeah. Well, you know what? They're all good, Kurt. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Okay. I'll grab the net. Oh, yes. I love this. 
He's grinding, he's grinding. He's coming on we'll right behind the boat, he's coming. We'll go this other side. Oh, there you go. Here we go. Barely hooked, barely hooked. Come on, Chris. come on. Barely. Oh, we him. broke it, we broke that ice. Got him. Nice. There we oh, go, there we go. Yes. Oh, nice Look at that, fish. Kurt. <laughs> Here we are. Oh. I was just telling Dan, we come to this spot, I said, be ready. Good spot for some musky, top water bites going good. This guy crushed it. Did he not crush he it? He did crush it, and you know what, Kurt? That is my first top water musky ever. Oh, awesome. So thank you so much. Awesome. I mean, pretty, pretty healthy fish. Nice huh? green. <clears throat> beautiful. So let's um, let's let him go for another day, huh? Let's do that, yeah. But great gee, looking fish. Beautiful. Oh, there he goes. Oh boy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Th th that was great. We still got in good conditions, overcast, top water, and that fish, did he not just erupt on that Hammered bait? it, absolutely hammered it. And oh, I mean, it's like, I'm just ready to get right back <laughs> through there and catch another one with conditions like this. It is so musky like. Oh, that was a nice, nice fish. Thank nice you, fish. thanks great. for putting me on him Let's there. get another one. The We Love It Outdoors crew is in north central Wisconsin chasing small river muskies on the upper Wisconsin River with guide Kurt Schultz. The Wisconsin isn't the only overlooked muskie water in the upper Midwest. In fact, there are dozens of out of the way and hard to get to waters that are home to toothy trophies. And most of the time, it's not just the occasional fish. In fact, last year, Kurt boated 230 muskies from the Wisconsin. Wow, that wind is starting to do something different, though. Come on, fish, just spark it. It's getting way more overcast now. Oh, oh. That was a big boil. Gone. That, that was a musky. God, God. Was it? He just blew up on it and missed it. That was a pretty big swirl. I don't know if he was a monster or not, but it was a nice fish. I'm going to back us out of here real quick. It's amazing. You know, I fish the Wisconsin River, and everybody always asks, well, you fish the Wisconsin River primarily. And there's a lot of small rivers that I fish as well, and it's always amazing to me uh, all these different areas out there that most anglers don't really know about. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. That's a musky. Dang it. I had him. I missed him. Oh, really? Wow. That was a big tail. Yeah, dang it. Yeah, that was a bigger tail. You know, you gotta get out there and work, work at it. The main thing is put your time in, get out there. You might not be successful the first couple times, but you start learning some of these small rivers and it's amazing. There's so many good bodies of water uh, as far as river systems around this area. All right, be ready. That one might, if he's in here, he may hit here again. Let's see if we can get him to go. Wow, something's moving in, boys. Huh? Something's moving in here. Yeah. Perfect. Absolutely perfect for musky fish. Got him. Musky. Oh, got him. All right. Little guy. We'll take him. Home. I got to reel this up quick. Okay, there you go. Yes. Got him. There we right go. Woo. Nice job. Boy, we sure have moved, moved some fish around here the last half an hour. Big Man. time. Were you looking away when that hit? No, I was looking right at the bait. He smoked it pretty hard. Here, here I'm gonna, like, I gotta get my rod before it. Here we are, Wisconsin River. This guy came out and hit pretty hard. We've been seeing some fish moving them around. Nice green fish. We'll get a clip tail there, Kurt? Yeah, or? a little clip tail on them. Sometimes they get beat up on the river here a little bit. Looks like somebody maybe clipped that one. Nice looking fish though. For Kurt, landing a fish like that means just one thing, job security. It's a sure sign of how healthy this fishery really is. There he goes. Nice muskie, we'll take him. You know, he hit hard right next to the boat. The last couple of strikes I've actually had were real close to the boat. So they're starting to get a little more aggressive here. Be ready, Dan, because be very really well if they're turned on like this. A lot of times, if I'm seeing like one, two, three like that, they're just turned on all over now. Hopefully that's the case. 
a little flurry of activity like that can get a guy going for another hour. Oh yeah. Or two. My back pain is not so much anymore. Right. It's gonna be worse tomorrow, but it doesn't <laughs> feel bad now, right? When it comes to baits, like the Wisconsin River itself, Kurt likes to keep it simple. There are so many baits out there in the market. Uh, all the baits work. I always figure I can take any bait that's on a shelf and I can make it work. But try to get a, a good sense of maybe 10 to 15 baits that you like total for maybe walleye, bass, muskie. And just kind of stick with those until you get really comfortable with them and then branch out. A lot of times you'll see so many guys have so many baits, they don't even know which way to go. I get those 10 to 15 good baits, get them zoned in, make sure they're working properly, you're catching fish on them, and then once you start learning how those baits are working, branch out and maybe try some new lures. Well, let's see. What in the Got one. Nice one. Got it, buddy. Nice musky. Nice musky. Hit it hard. I don't know how well he's hooked. Where, where do you want me? Holy cow, yes. Good one. Had a buddy. Had a buddy. Yep. Wherever. He's okay. going your way yes, now. Nice fish. That is awesome. Holy mackerel. Okay, we're going to get him head first if we can. It's a nice one. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Big fish. Ooh. Boys, he pull and they pull he, hard. He is really big. He is big. He's hooked good. He's hooked good. He's hooked, he's hooked good. He's hooked is good. he? Yep. Oh, he makes me nervous. Nice job, buddy. Kurt, you are the man. Come on, here he comes. Here he comes. They pull hard. You can't, you can't do much with them. They go where they want to go. Goodness gracious. It's a nice, pretty fish, too. Beautiful fish. Okay, we'll get him in head. Oh, he's barely hooked, barely hooked. Oh, crap, he is barely hooked. Just take her easy. Is your drag working? Yep. Okay, ready? Here he comes. Head first. Yes! <laughs> we got him in the, it's hooks a lot. Yes! We got him! Yes! <laughs> right here! Woo! Oh, nice! Yeah, even more. Nice, nice job! Nice 40 incher. Way to go, bud! Okay. Oh. You got her? Oh. There she is! Oh. Been casting hard, you know, and it pays off. You, you know, you spend a lot of hours while you're casting, casting. When these big toothy guys show up, He's all set to go, huh? Look at that guy. Now this isn't musky fishing, or at least not the kind of musky fishing I've heard about. We're only halfway through our day, and we've already seen five fish and landed three. This is a small river eye opener, and with the weather front moving in, I have a feeling we're not done with the greenbacks yet. Well, we just got a nice fish on a bucktail again. You know, I've been casting bucktail, what, for a couple hours maybe? And I would say I've moved four fish in the last couple hours at least. Caught two, and uh, now Dan, I think, should just definitely change over to the bucktail. You know, he hasn't been seen as much, so he's gonna give it a shot. And uh, bucktail seems like the way to go right now, Dan. Definitely, yeah, I might be slow, but I'm not really stupid, so <laughs> I'm gonna whip this baby for a while and see what happens. Let's get another one. This is my go-to bait as a kid growing up, MEPS. Everything was MEPS. The MEPS Black Fury, the MEPS everything, just MEPS. The MEPS spinner, unbelievable. And we're still using it today. And still catching fish on it today. There, see it? That was a little musky, a little oh. frickin' mucky. Oh man, oh man, that's cool. It's like the third cast with this bucktail. bucktail right here. And I had a little musky smack it. So you know what? I'm feeling good. And I got, um, man, that was cool. I saw him hit, he was about, you know, probably 20, 30 incher, not a big one, but. There he is. Yeah? No. Gonna jump, no? I don't know how big he is, but he hit pretty hard. Little musky, look at that! Oh was man, that did you see him jump? Yeah. Was it really? Yep. Whoa! Cool. It's a northern. No, it's musky. There we go. A little green guy, boy. We'll get him back in the water. Do you want to I'll handle just, that? I'll just let him go here. I'll grab him, all right, guys. It sure is nice to see these small muskies. You know, this is our future to the river, and uh, catch them, get them on a hook. We'll get them back in the water, and good safe release for these little guys, so we can catch them in the future. We'll get them back in. There he goes. Good safe release. 
Swam off pretty good there. Hopefully see him in a few years when he's about 40, 45 inches. You know, I'm truly blessed to be able to take this show and explore so many different and overlooked outdoor adventures. This trip down the Wisconsin is just one example. A small, shallow, unassuming river, a slow float through a canopy of hardwood forests, and wild, toothy muskies ready to rumble. And I'll bet most of you didn't even know it was here. But what you have to understand is that this is just one of hundreds of off-the-beaten-path adventures that are out there. You just have to go look for them. The weather front Kurt and I have been watching all day is finally closing in, but we still have time to make a few more casts. Oh, there we go. There there we go. Nice one, nice one. Yeah, there we go. See, good they're fish. pushing the muskies out here. That's a good one. Yeah. They're out in the middle. As long as they don't fall off my There you go. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's not a whopper, but you know what? That's a rush. God. Man, do they crush it, huh? Yeah. Nice job. I'll get the players. He looks like he's hooked pretty good. Okay. Do you want to hold the yep. net? I got it. Gotta get a hold of him. Yeah. There we go. That's pretty cool. You know what, like you were saying earlier, it's like the river, this Wisconsin River, is just full of muskies of all different sizes. Yeah, beautiful fish, nice green one. And that thing hammered your bucktail. You know, we switched over to bucktails and we've been producing. Pretty fish. Almost as if she was waiting for that last fish, Mother Nature finally shows up to rain on our musky parade, and the day comes to an early close. But to hook and land five fish in one day should get any musky angler's attention. And we've still got another morning to explore what the Wisconsin River has to offer. Another morning in the heart of Wisconsin, and we're back on the beautiful Wisconsin River. The front that ended yesterday's muskie hunt has passed, leaving behind the typical post-front conditions, clear skies, high wind, and cold temperatures. Since we boated more than our share of muskies on day one, this morning we're going to explore some of the other opportunities the Wisconsin has to offer. <laughs> that one's first cast. I, I still have the jig, and it's a walleye too, look at that. There you go. Very first cast. Nice. Come here, you little mugger. That's pretty awesome. That is really awesome, actually. Very first cast. I was actually waiting for Kurt to dig out the crawlers. I put down a, a plastic, and um, and that thing just engulfed it. As you can see, there is nothing left of that. Look at that. Just absolutely inhaled it. But look at the coloring on that walleye. You know, compared to a Gull Lake walleye, that thing is just really, really golden, pretty. Curve. Yeah, good looking fish. You can use uh, any kind of a jig, depending on the current. You might not have to get up to a quarter ounce. You might be able to use a 16th ounce. Uh, the main thing is you gotta be on the bottom of the river. Uh, close to the bottom is better. And basically you can use a night crawler. You can use uh, any kind of uh, plastic bait that you like to use. They'll hit them all. Certain days they'll prefer the night crawler. They might prefer a minnow. And there's certain days that plastic will all do both of them. There we go. Another Walter. That might be a 15 incher there. There you go. We'll corral that baby. Yeah, that's really cool. Like Kurt was saying, you know, some days they want the plastic, some days they want the crawlers. That first one I caught on a plastic and then I just shifted gears and went to just the standard, you know, lead head and a crawler. But the bottom line is maybe today's one of those days they're just biting everything. But just a just a pretty little fish. When I'm out here uh, fishing walleyes, bass, muskie, whatever it is, I prefer having the power drive uh, trolling motor, the Trova personally with the iPilot. It's just uh, a great tool on the river. You know, I'm able to use a handheld as well and you know, keep my feet free. I can just look down, I can point to the trolling motor north, get my boat in position and just hold us there. It's a great tool to have on the river. It's got plenty of power. 
Another great feature with this trolling motor is, you know, if I have to net a fish or retie, uh, I can hit the spot lock and it'll hold me right in position. If I caught a fish, hit that spot lock, it'll keep me right in that same area. I won't drift down river. It's a great feature. You don't get out of position. Fish, huh? We got a fish on right here. Another, bigger one. That's another, a bigger one. Yeah, that's probably another close to 15 yeah, there. That would be. I'd be surprised if that was not a keeper there. Boy. Bumble, this is really cool to be able to, to fish walleyes on the river. I mean, I spend most of my time fishing them on the lake, but you know, here on the Wisconsin River, we're catching some nice eater walleyes. But, but back home in Minnesota, we've, we've got the Mississippi, and, and these river systems are actually loaded with walleyes. People, people just aren't targeting them. You know, so I mean, they are in there big time, and it's just a really underutilized fishery is these river systems. So I'm going to put that one back. In the river, your bait selection options go through the roof. Unlike their lake bound cousins, river walleyes aren't as selective in what they eat. Plenty of food comes tumbling down the river, including minnows, bugs, worms, and rusty crayfish which means you can catch walleyes on baits you would never consider on your lake back home. On a Texas ring, what are you calling that? Is that the, the beaver tail? Yep. You know, mimicking a crayfish, but... And golden pan-sized walleyes aren't the only option on small rivers like the Wisconsin. There always seems to be a healthy population of sturdy pike, and no angler can resist the acrobatics of the smallmouth bass. Oh, look at that small, yeah? Huh? Not a monster, but they're still fun to catch. All of this incredible angling action is rolled up into one small, scenic, and simple package called the Wisconsin River. And it's a story that's repeated all over the country, including someplace close to you. All you have to do is get out there, explore, and discover these hidden hot spots. There's a good chance you'll find a diamond in the rough, and I promise you'll love it. Continue this adventure by visiting your local Mills Fleet Farm store or shop online at fleetfarm.com for all your sporting good needs and more. Fleetfarm.com.